Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to explore three fundamental concepts in alternating current, or AC, circuits, resistance, reactance, and impedance. By the end of this, you'll have a clear understanding of what each term means and how they all work together. Let's begin with the image at the very top. It shows a basic AC circuit. On the left, we have a circle with a wavy line inside it. This is the symbol for an AC power supply which provides a voltage, labeled V, that constantly changes direction, or alternates. This is different from a DC, or direct current, supply like a battery, where the voltage is constant. The lines represent the wires, and the arrow labeled I shows the current flowing through the circuit. On the right, we see a simple box labeled load. The load is any component or device that consumes electrical energy. In an AC circuit, this load can be a simple resistor, a more complex component like an inductor or a capacitor, or a combination of all three. The total opposition that this load presents to the flow of the AC current is what we are here to understand. This total opposition is called impedance. But to understand impedance, we first need to understand its two building blocks, resistance and reactance. Let's move to our first section, resistance, represented by the letter R. Resistance is a concept you might already be familiar with. It is the opposition to the flow of electrical current. Think of it like friction. When current flows through a component with resistance, electrical energy is converted into heat. The diagram shows a simple circuit with our AC supply connected to a component with a zigzag line. This is the symbol for a resistor, labeled R. In a purely resistive circuit like this one, the opposition to the current is straightforward. The formula shown in the box is a version of Ohm's law. It says, R equals V divided by I. This means the resistance, R, is calculated by taking the voltage, V, across the resistor and dividing it by the current, I, flowing through it. The unit of resistance is the Ohm, represented by the Greek letter Omega. For a resistor, this opposition is the same whether you use an AC or a DC supply. It doesn't depend on the frequency of the current. Now, let's introduce a new idea, reactance, represented by the letter X. Reactance is also a form of opposition to current flow, but it's unique to AC circuits. It's the opposition offered by components that store energy, specifically inductors and capacitors. Unlike resistance, which dissipates energy as heat, reactance stores energy in a magnetic or electric field and then releases it back into the circuit. A crucial point is that reactance depends on the frequency of the AC current. Let's look at the first type of reactance, shown on the left, inductive reactance. The diagram shows our AC supply connected to a component that looks like a coil or a spring. This is the symbol for an inductor, labeled L. An inductor opposes any change in current. Since AC current is constantly changing, an inductor is always reacting to it. This opposition is called inductive reactance, written as X with a subscript L. The formula for inductive reactance is X sub L equals omega times L. Let's break that down. L is the inductance of the coil, measured in a unit called Henry's. The symbol omega is the angular frequency of the AC supply. It tells us how fast the current is oscillating, and it's measured in radians per second. Angular frequency, omega, is directly related to the standard frequency, F, which is measured in hertz. The relationship is omega equals 2 times pi times f. So, the formula tells us that the inductive reactance increases as the frequency of the AC current increases, or as the inductance of the coil increases. More frequency means more opposition. Below this, you see another formula, x sub l equals j times omega times l. The j here is the imaginary unit, the square root of negative 1. In electronics, we use J instead of I to avoid confusion with the symbol for current. This J is a mathematical tool that tells us something very important, in an inductor, the voltage and current are not in sync. The voltage across the inductor leads the current through it by 90 degrees. This is called a phase shift. Now let's look at the other side, at capacitive reactance. The diagram shows the AC supply connected to a component with two parallel lines. This is the symbol for a capacitor, labeled C. A capacitor opposes any change in voltage by storing electrical charge. As the AC voltage rises and falls, 
the capacitor is constantly charging and discharging, which creates an opposition to the current flow. This opposition is called capacitive reactance, written as X with a subscript C. The formula for capacitive reactance is X sub C equals 1 divided by the product of omega and C. Here, C is the capacitance, measured in farads, and omega is the same angular frequency we saw before. Notice that this relationship is inverse. This means that capacitive reactance decreases as the frequency or the capacitance increases. This is the exact opposite of an inductor. High frequencies pass through a capacitor more easily. Just like with the inductor, we have a vector form, x sub c equals 1 divided by the product of j, omega, and c. When we move the j from the denominator to the numerator, it becomes negative j. This negative sign is also very important. It tells us that in a capacitor, the voltage and current are also out of sync, but in the opposite way. The voltage across that capacitor lags behind the current by 90 degrees. So, to summarize reactants, it's the frequency-dependent opposition from inductors and capacitors. The general formula for reactants is X equals V divided by I, where V and I are considered as vectors, or phasors, to account for the phase shifts. Finally, let's bring it all together with our third concept, impedance, represented by the letter Z. Impedance is the total opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. It is the combination of both resistance and reactance. The general formula is written as Z equals or plus J times X. This shows that impedance is a complex quantity. The R is the real part, representing the energy dissipating resistance. The JX is the imaginary part, representing the energy storing reactants, which includes the phase shifts. Let's look at the different circuit combinations. First, an RL circuit, which has a resistor and an inductor in series. The impedance for this circuit is Z equals or plus J times X sub L. The resistance R and the inductive reactants X sub L don't simply add up like regular numbers because of the 90 degree phase shift. To find the total magnitude, or the overall size of the impedance, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus X sub L squared. Next, we have an RC circuit, with a resistor and a capacitor in series. The impedance here is Z equals or minus J times X sub C, remember, the capacitor's reactance has a negative J, which is why we see the minus sign. To find the magnitude of the impedance for this circuit, we again use the Pythagorean theorem. The magnitude of Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus X sub C squared. Finally, we have the most complete case, an RLC circuit, with a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor all in series. In this circuit, the inductive reactants and the capacitive reactants directly oppose each other. The total reactance is their difference, X sub L minus X sub C. So, the complex impedance for an RLC circuit is, Z equals or plus J times the quantity, X sub L minus X sub C. The total magnitude of the impedance is therefore, Z equals the square root of R squared plus the square of the quantity, X sub L minus X sub C. This single formula covers all possibilities. If there's no capacitor, X sub C is zero, and we get the RL formula. If there's no inductor, X sub L is zero, and we get the RC formula. This brings us to the final, most important boxed equation at the bottom, Z equals V divided by I. This is the Ohm's law for AC circuits. It's a powerful generalization that works for any AC circuit, no matter how complex. It states that the total impedance, Z, is the ratio of the AC voltage, V, to the AC current, I. This simple-looking formula elegantly accounts for resistance, all forms of reactance, and all the phase shifts between voltage and current. So, to recap, resistance is the simple opposition that creates heat. Reactance is the frequency-dependent opposition from inductors and capacitors that involves storing energy and shifting phases. And impedance is the grand total, the complete picture of opposition in an AC circuit, combining resistance and reactance into a single, comprehensive value. Understanding these three concepts is the key to analyzing and designing all alternating current systems.